All right, let's do this. We've entered the 20s, the roaring 20s. Classwork number 20 here of our distance learning. 10.2.6. Which method is best for solving an application? Very good. Let's start with uh, getting our methods down to solving. You guys remember those? Solving by? That's, of course, rewriting. Number two, solving by? Undoing. And finally, last but certainly not least, but maybe least because it's the easiest if you get good at it and it's the fastest, solving by looking inside. Very good. Now I'm going to put a few things in captions here in parentheses for all three of these. Just a little bit more about these because you already used these today. Okay, let's read through the introduction. Recently, you investigated three different approaches to solving single variable equations. Well, here they have it written, rewriting, looking inside, and undoing. Today, you'll use those approaches to solve new kinds of equations you have not solved before. You will also use your equation writing skills to write inequality for an application. Very nice. We did that a lot in Chapter 9. Uh, as you work today, you ask yourself these questions. How can I represent it? What is the best approach for this equation? Have I found all of the solutions? And that's what we're doing today. So we look here. we got some fancier, funky, funky uh, kind of problems to solve here. So you're going to have to know how to solve problems and know kind of what is the fastest or the least error prone way of solving them. That's why I start with this up top here. Okay, so just a few things here that I'm going to write next to each of these. I'll start by looking inside. Looking inside is just using what to solve a problem. I'm going to write here logic. You're just logicking through it. What must something equal? So like, for instance, this one could be a good one here. What's the only number when cubed becomes eight, right? x to the third power equals 8. What would x have to be? Oh, x would have to be 2. x would have to be 2. So this one is a perfect candidate for looking inside where x minus 13 must represent 2 because 2 cubed is the only number that gets us to 8. And here, boo boom, a booya, I got myself as an answer, x equals 15. And then I check my answer. Check your work. I could check it in just to be totally sure. And yes, indeedy, I got 8 equals 8 at the end of the day of my check-in of plugging in x for 15. So I know that x equals 15 is true for me. Okay, stuff like that today. Try to use logic. And then I write parentheses next to the other two because uh, things to keep in mind by solving by rating and rewriting, solving by undoing. Solving by rewriting is just doing out the math. Doing it out, you might be able to take this and follow the rules, your order of operations to get a different way of presenting the problem, and then it might be easier to solve. So next to solving my rewriting, I'm gonna write PEMDAS. Okay, it's kind of following PEMDAS in some equations in order to solve them, right? Your order of operations and, uh, and problems. And if we have distribution, for instance, this might be one where you follow your PEMDAS rules in order to solve, right? You have to square first, right? X squared plus, uh, looks like it would have to be 24X plus 144. And then you multiply after you do the exponent. So here, nothing to simplify in parentheses, then do the exponent. So we'd have to do X plus 12 squared. And then you move to the M in PEMDAS, and that's multiplied if you multiply by three. And then you can maybe use uh, zero product property after you subtract 27 both sides. So anyways, that might be an example of doing solving by rewriting. Or actually that last one here, ooh, the last one E, you could solve by undoing that one. That's probably what I would do in E. I'm probably going to need to mark that here. I'd probably solve my undoing or looking inside, but undoing. Okay. So solving by rewriting its PEMDAS next to it. What do you think I'm going to write next to undoing? This is a good one. This is the whole reason why I'm doing this. The whole reason why I'm starting this lesson like this. Instead of writing PEMDAS, I'm going to write what? I'm going to write SADMEP. That's right. This is the first year I've really made a big deal about SADMEP. What does SADMEP have to do with PEMDAS? Right? They sound kind of like PEMDAS, SADMEP, Oh, yes, PEMDAS spelled backwards. Check it out here. S-A-D-M-E-P spelled S-A-D-M-E-P. Okay, it's the opposite of the order of operations. Okay, so when you are solving something by undoing, you're doing the opposite of PEMDAS, of what the operations would be in the problem. If you're going to work on rewriting something, then you just got to follow the order of operations. Okay, and uh, for that one here, Let's maybe follow our sad map rules to see how we can undo question E here, E here right now. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down here. I'm gonna write sad map because this is a good one. This is one I want you to keep in mind when you're solving equations here. That when you solve, you start by the last thing happening to the variable and you start undoing that stuff. And this takes a little while for people to pick up, which is why I'm making the big thing here. Okay, S, do we see subtraction here? That's not in parentheses. Remember, parentheses we'll look at last. So we gotta deal with this grouping last here. So no subtraction. There is addition, but it's in parentheses. We gotta do the parentheses last here. That'll be the last thing we're coming up with. 
five. Uh, division, no, there's no division. Oh, multiplication, okay, multiplication. So instead of dealing with this exponent, because that comes later in SADMEP or reverse PEMDAS, uh, we're going to get rid of the multiplication action here. So we got to get rid of multiplication and we'll undo it. What's the opposite of multiplication? That's right, division. Do the opposite, and that's going to help us simplify this down. And you got to do it to both sides. Remember, in order to keep that statement of equality balanced, you do one thing to one side, you do the same thing to the other. Divide by 3 here, divide by 3 here. And we get x plus 12 squared equal to 9. Okie dokie, we took care of that, took care of a little multiplication action with some division. Uh, we can take care of some exponent action yet, uh, next. That's right, yes, 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 yes. We don't want to deal with the parentheses yet. We want to deal with exponent because that comes before the P in sad map. I have a trademark of sad map there. I think I like that. Okay, so what's going to get rid of this squaring? Okay, that's right. The inverse operation of squaring is taking a square root. So I will square root both sides. What can I for, uh, forget? Oh, that's right. X plus 12 could equal positive 3 or it could equal negative 3 because negative 3 squared is also 9. So I've got to put a plus or minus over here to show that fact that X plus 12 could equal a negative 3 or it could equal a positive 3. And that's what I'll do. So I've undid the exponent here in this pink step. X plus 12 is equal to plus or minus 3. All right, sad map P. Do we have to deal with P? Oh, well, we can just drop the parentheses because now we're, we, we don't have anything over here other than the parentheses X plus 12. So cool, we'll undo that grouping. And then finally, we can just subtract 12 from both sides. And we're going to get, we can do this in our head a bit. I trust you guys. 3 minus 12 is negative 9. But negative 3 minus 12 is negative 15. And that's all she wrote. That's what I got for my answer. And is that right? Yeah, that's right. We're adding 12 to the x here, so we can double check our answers just by plugging in if we want to. Or we really should. The assignment says that we should. I won't do these for all of them, but I'll do it for this one here. So if I plug in negative 9, this would become positive 3 because negative 9 plus 12 is positive 3. Positive 3 is what I want because that's what's going to get us to positive 9 here. So that means negative 15 is going to get us to negative 3 because that would also get us to positive 9 once we do the squaring. 3 times 9 is 27, so this solution works, and negative 15 would work also. Proven there, because 3 times 9 does equal 27. Negative 15 is a solution, too. So those were two of the problems. That was pretty quick. All we're going to have is an inequality problem after that in 1089. Then you get some math notes, and then, hey, this is a pretty easy Monday lesson for you here. So we just have parts A, C, D, and F remaining. We're going to solve those super quickly. We'll do it together. So let's get into it now. Maybe try the problems first, and then watch the video afterwards. But which method works best? More solving an application. Coming at you right now. Did I say Monday a second ago? I meant Tuesday. Monday's a holiday, right? Happy Memorial Day. I hope you had a good Memorial Day, right? That's the mark of the beginning of summer, so we're almost there, guys. Um, hey, one thing I also didn't write down in this one, we got to make sure we do this in all these. Write down the method that you think is easiest. It's just good to stay structured and stay organized and see what the differences of these things are. So we did undoing for this one. Sure, looking inside could have been good, too, uh, but you had to undo this three part, right? That was the key part to then figure out how to look inside. What must x plus 2 have to equal? Um, in order to get this thing to work. So I call this one undoing. I'm calling this one looking inside because this is pretty clear. X minus 13 has got to be 2 because 2 is the only number 1 cubed. gets us to 8. Um, so make sure you do that. Let's read this here each time. You be, be sure you found all the possible solutions. We did. So there might be two solutions. might be infinite solutions on some of these. Um, and it says check your work and write down the name of the method used. Definitely do that. I expect to see that when you turn it in on the good old Google Classroom. Okie dokie. We've solved algebra uh, absolute value problems before in, in, well, we haven't really done them for inequalities yet other than the cahoots, but we've, uh, done them for equ equations before. And this is an equation. We have an equal sign. Yes, 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 yes. Very nice. Uh, so here, what will be easiest here? Well, first, I guess when you get to a problem, see if there's any logic you can do right now. Well, this is an absolute value problem. What does that mean? What does that tell us? This needs to be, or this could be all possible values of X. What, like what could 4X plus 20 possibly be, possibly represent. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It could equal either positive 8 or negative 8. So I would probably call this looking inside. 
That's right, because in absolute value, you're going to have two values here inside the absolute value bars that when you evaluate that absolute value, when you take the absolute value of the number that would represent 4x plus 20, uh, it would give us a positive 8. And one of those numbers would be positive 8, absolute value, positive 8. Of course, 8 is 8 units away from 0. What's the other number that's 8 units away from 0? Oh, that's right. Negative 8 is 8 units from 0 on the number line. So I would call this looking inside, and now we can just solve this problem. And for this, I would break up into two equations. And then maybe do, I'm going to do the subtracting of 20 in my head as I break up equations. So 4x got to be positive 8 minus 20. So I'd have to subtract 20 from both sides. So positive 8 minus 20 is negative 12. And negative 8 minus 20 is negative 28. One more step, and I'm going to figure out my values of x here. Divide both sides by 4. That's it. So x is going to have to equal negative 3 to make this equation true. Or it could equal negative 7, and that would also yield us a true solution for the equation. There are my solutions. Plug them in. Let's just plug them in our heads. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 plus 20 is 8. Yes, 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 yes. That's what we want. Take the absolute value. Positive 8. Negative 7 plus 4. Oh, that's negative 28. And plus 20, that brings us to negative 8. Yes. And we take the absolute value, and we get positive 8. So negative 8 or 8 is what it took to get us there. And these are the numbers that'll take in that particular relationship to get us a statement of equality. Let's keep going, shall we? Well, here we could look inside to kind of figure out what this is, but I'm not going to do that because I need to undo on this one. So I'm going to write undoing. And with undoing, this is why I kind of got out of this early in the year, but I really want to get into the end of the year, right? I want you to remember this, right? Teacher wants you to remember stuff here. Is if we're going to do undoing, un, uh, undoing, let's do our sad map rule. So subtraction, addition, division, multiplication, exponent, and parentheses, that's the order we're going to go in to figure out how we can undo particular operations. And remember, parentheses just stands for grouping. Ways that numbers get grouped. Do they get grouped in the numerator of a fraction and the denominator fraction? Absolute value bars are grouping of particular expressions. Oh, we have some grouping here. This is a radical symbol. So this is a square root expression here, square root of x minus 4. We can't actually simplify this because it's grouped together. We can't do that unless we do all this other stuff here first. We can't undo anything inside of that grouping or that parenthesis. It's not parentheses, but we have parentheses there in PEMDAS. So we show that. So anyways, let's go through our list. On the left side here, the only thing here is multiplication we can really deal with right now. So we're going to divide both sides to eliminate multiplication. So opposite of multiplication is division. And I get root x minus 4 equal to 7. And now I can deal with my parentheses, my grouping, right? This isn't parentheses, this is a root. So it will require a different operation to get rid of it. It's not like premise parentheses where we can just drop them off the problem. What gets rid of a square root? What's the opposite of square root? Well, hence, this could be written out as x minus 4 to the 1 half power. Right, remember, a one half power is the same as taking a square root. So we can mul we can take the exponents to what power? Both sides to get rid of that one half power. Oh, that's right. One half times by two would bring us to an, a one exponent, which is what we want. So, anyways, that's a little bit confusing. Just try to remember that squaring gets rid of a square root. So if I square the left side and I square the entire right side, that's a legal move. As long as I do one thing to one side, I've can do, I have to do the same thing to the other, and there are just a few tiny exceptions to that. But uh, squaring is one of those things where you have to do it to both sides to maintain equality. And then here you get x minus 4 equal to 49. And then very quickly you'd be able to solve this. Add 4 to both sides, x equals 53. And let's check it in our heads. 2 times by root 53 minus 4. We've got to do 53 minus 4. Here's where we're doing PEMDAS to figuring out what the left side must equal. We got to do 53 minus 4 first because we're simplifying in parentheses. So 53 minus 4 is 49. And then we got to take the square root, okay? So that uh, 40 square root of 49 is 7. And 7 times 2 is 14. And that's what we got. So we're checked it off. We're good to go. Checking in our heads. All right, undoing. So kind of the way I would say is you look inside when you have stuff grouped together. And what does that group have to equal? So here, this is a group. And this is a group. Here we're grouped by parentheses. And the other one, we're grouped by absolute value symbol. So it's easy to look inside to see what needs to be in that group, what needs to represent. Because this group is, and its operators on the outside, is equal to something. So it's easy to look inside. This here is more complicated. So when I say when it's more complicated, my recommendation is, you guessed it, 
I would solve by undoing this and following our sad map reverse order of operations. So order of operations is what you use to evaluate something, but you need to undo those operations in order to isolate a variable, to solve what it must represent when we, hey, say, do plug into that equation to see what it is equal to, what it amounts to. So we're going to follow sad map again. Okay, subtraction, can we get, so we, again, we ignore the parentheses here. So outside of parentheses, is there subtraction happening? Yes, there is. Yes, 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 yes. So we'll add four to both sides. And then we get six times by the absolute value of x minus eight equal to 18. So that's subtraction. Addition, don't have to deal with. Uh, division, don't have to deal with that yet. Multiplication, oh yes, there's a multiplication outside the, the absolute value bars, okay? So let's not touch this parentheses thing right here. One thing I say about, about solving absolute value problems too, when they're more complicated like this, is to abs isolate the absolute value, yes. So if we'd have to isolate the absolute value problem, that means get rid of the stuff outside of it first. Get rid of that subtraction. And then this 6, it says technically multiply it by the absolute value of x minus 8, but that 6 can't distribute. Distribution only happens over parentheses. does not happen over the absolute value symbols. So you got to get rid of it, right? That is the problem. You can't solve this one by rewriting. you got to solve this one by undoing. Okay, so now we have in uh, the x minus 8 part, Absolute value isolated, and that's going to have to equal 3 because this is 6 times by the opposite value x minus 8, so the opposite is just division, and we're solving by undoing. Uh, finally, we got to deal with the parentheses and doing that too. We know that x minus 8 equals 3, so that means x minus 8 must equal plus, must represent either negative 3 or positive 3 because negative 3, the absolute value, would give us positive 3. So that would give us the answer here, right? So uh, we know this here. Okay, break them apart. Solve. Could equal negative 3 or could equal positive 3. And then we just got to add 8 to both sides. And there we go. And with that, we're left with just one problem left. We have part F. So just taking a look at the work we've done. We're looking inside, undoing. That's the big stuff. Should we solve by rewriting this one? Well, no, this looks like, well, I guess, yeah, this is going to be rewriting. <laughs> this one's going to be a rewriting and a little bit of looking inside. And whenever I give this assignment, people are like, well, can I choose more than one? Am I doing more than one? Yeah, you're doing more than one. You can use different frames of logic, right, and different parts of the problem, whatever it takes you through, as long as you're following the rules of math and getting everything to flow correctly. You're all good to go. So this one here I'm going to bake in is that elusive solving by rewriting because this one here was early in uh, the lessons when we started Chapter 10. I believe this was the very first lesson here. We want to solve this one by first rewriting this in a more useful, simpler to solve equation, right? Simpler to solve equation. So you remember this one, step one, we want to rewrite this by finding a common base. All right, we haven't taken Mr. Tran's Algebra 2 class. We haven't taken Mr. Lee's Algebra 2 class. We haven't taken Miss Arnold's Algebra 2 class. So we don't know how to solve for the exponent uh, variable here uh, because we don't know logarithms yet. But hey, we can solve by finding a common base. And then after that, once we solve by rewriting with a common base, then we can look inside and seeing, make an argument about what two expressions must equal to uh, one another. So kind of rewriting with common base and then two, Looking inside to see what uh, expressions equal one another, and by that, I just say, hey, drop a base. Drop the base because we know by looking inside those exponents, they would need to equal each other if they have a common base. So our common base here is obviously going to be 6 because 6 to the first power, that's just 6, and we'd be left with x plus 9. So we haven't had to change the base in this one here. But 36, yes, 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 we can get a 6 here because 36 is equivalent to 6 squared. And then we're left with the uh, x exponent there. So 6 to the second power times by x exponent um, is going to be equivalent to 36 to the x power. So uh, at this point, what we can do is drop the base. Boom. Get rid of that base. And then we got x plus 9 equal to 2x. And then simply, we just need to find the value of x. So that would make both of the exponents in the earlier equation equal to one another. And that's by solving this equation. Subtract x from both sides so that we have x isolated on the right side and x has to be 9. We've solved it. We can go back and double check our work. 6 to the 18th power is going to equal 
36th to the ninth power, because 36th to the ninth power, that is just 6 to the second power. And 2 times 9 is 18, and 9 plus 9 is 18, and uh, we know the equations equal to each other. And so that's that. This is a pretty quick assignment. We got the 6 done, and uh, you just have a word problem afterwards here, okay? So this, uh, this one you're being asked to, you're going to use your equation writing skills to write an inequality for an application. Yes, 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 yes. Inequalities, although they're not equations, they use a lot of the same skills from writing equations to uh, write in inequality. Ernie, good old Ernie, he's thinking about installing a new hot tub in his backyard. He and his brother Bert, I guess, live together. They like they like bubble uh, bubbles and, uh, and hot tubs, I guess, now. They usually just take baths together, but now they're in the hot tub. Bert and Ernie here. Uh, the company he will order it from makes square hot tubs, and the smallest hot tub he can order is four by four feet. He plans to add a three-foot-wide deck on two adjacent sides, as shown in the diagram below. Okay, so it looks like... He doesn't know how long his hot tub's gonna be, but it's square. So, you know what? I'm gonna label this. Let's let, okay. Let's see if I'm right here. Let's let the uh, width of the hot tub, and that would also be the length, equal x because it's square. So they would have the same lengths here. And then he's going to add a three-foot wide deck on two of the adjacent sides of the square. So adjacent to this side, we have some deck action. Adjacent to this side, we have some deck action. And then, ooh, looks like we uh, have like a nine-square-foot little uh, area over here. Anyway, um... If a uh, three, three foot wide deck on two adjacent sides is shown in the dining room below, if Ernie's backyard, which is also square, ah, has 169 square feet of space, what is uh, the possible dimensions the hot tub can be? Right and solve an inequality to represent the equ equation. Okay, so if we're going to find the area of this whole guy here, so first of all, right and solve an equation that represents the situation, well, we the, we're being asked about what's the possible dimensions this hot tub can be. So one thing I say when you're starting word problems here, start by defining your variables and use it by choosing what it is you're trying to solve for. So you look for well, what are you being asked to ultimately identify, and that's what are the possible dimensions the hot tub could be. So we're gonna let x equal the length and the width, both of them, because they'd have to be the same. And do we have units? Yes, in feet. And that's going to determine how much of this 169 square feet gets used because we have that plus, plus three, it looks like here. So it looks like to me that if we're going to get area, right, that would be x plus three right here times by x plus three, however many feet there is here in x. We got three more feet to work with because we're trying to fit in uh, stuff in the backyard. And then we got to square it because x plus 3 times x plus 3 is the area of a square. That would be length width x plus 3 and width x plus 3. And we have, right, this, this backyard, we have a constraint here. It can be up to 169 square feet. So this looks like the inequality that they're looking for us to write. Did you guys get this? Yes, yes, yes. I hope so. I hope so. Um, okay. So now we need to solve this here. So if you remember, step one, let's get the boundaries. They don't ask us about number lines, so we just need to solve this inequality. So step one, get, get boundaries. That involves changing this from an inequality to an equation. You guys know how to solve quadratics now. We have a perfect square here, a perfect square on the right side, so we can take the square root of both sides. And just remember, the side where the variable is not, we got to put plus or minus here because plus or minus 7 squared would get us to 49. And then x plus 3 equals positive 7 or negative 7. Subtract 3 from all sides, and x could equal negative 10 feet. No, not negative 10 feet. That doesn't make any sense because how can feet be negative? So we're only going to have one solution. We get kind of an extraneous answer here that doesn't make sense in the context of the problem. And if you've taken geometry already, you know when you're dealing with dimensions of problems, you just care about the positive of those dimensions. So here we're going to do 7 plus 7 minus 3, and we're going to get 4 feet. Okay, 4 feet is the key thing. Wait, I got this thing. I got this one wrong. What did I do wrong? Why did I put 49 there? That doesn't make any sense at all. I should have put 169. 
Where did 49 come from? I guess I saw a 9 and made it a perfect square. Anyways, this should have been plus or minus 13. You're watching this. You're like, Mr. Fortin, why'd you do that? So, yes, actually, we do care about the negative here. We do. Because we are going to have two kind of boundaries we're solving for here. So, um, what's in here, the square root of, of uh, 169 is 13. So, we have a negative number, negative 13, right? Negative 13 squared would equal 169. Positive 13 squared would equal... 169 as well. So let's go ahead and solve for this now. We got a 13 action here, and we got positive or negative 13. So let's subtract. And yes, actually, we're ignoring that negative because we wouldn't have negative 3 minus 3 is negative 16. That doesn't make sense. Let's just have one boundary here. And this would be 13 feet, and that would be one of our boundary points. Okay, so now we got to ask ourselves here. Are our solutions here going to be greater than 13? So what does it say here? First of all, it says it has 169 square feet. So it can include, it can be up to 13 feet. That's fine because if it's 13 feet, it's exactly 169. Um, and oh wait, no, no, 10, 10. Mr. Fortin, Mr. Fortin, 13 minus 3 is 10. It should be 10 feet. So 10 feet is the largest, right, X could possibly be. Because then 10 plus 3 is 13. 13 squared is 169. So that should tell you that it needs to be less than 13 feet in width. And could it be 0 feet in width? No, that doesn't make sense. Is there another restriction? Oh, the smallest tub you can order is 4 by 4 feet. So it looks like he needs it to be... X can be... All right, we got 0 here. That's not a solution, but it can be between 4 because of this right here all the way up to 10 feet. All the way up to 10 feet. So we'll write our answer here now uh, to solve this situation here. The hot tub needs to be between 4 feet and 10 feet in length slash width. And that is the whole assignment. Got some math notes down here about solving absolute value equations. This is just to remind you about how to do this. Remember, follow your SADMEP rules in order to isolate the absolute value expression here. And then you can break it up into two equations, okay? So if you had a more complex equation like this, right? It's just saying how you can isolate the absolute value is you gotta get rid of subtraction first, add six to both sides. Then you can work your way. Next step would be getting rid of multiplication because you've already done the subtraction. There's no addition or addition or division. So get rid of multiplication, divide both sides by five. And then you can deal with the absolute value. You got your parentheses action there. And uh, 35 divided by 5 is 7. There we go. Yes, 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 yes. So then we can uh, look inside right here. Do they say looking inside? They don't say looking inside. That's looking inside. Is that 2x plus 3 could equal positive 7. It could also equal negative 7, right? Because this here, there are the two numbers that have an absolute value of 7 or negative 7. And uh, this is a little note, too, that I said in the, in the assignment. You can never distribute a uh, multiplication over um, absolute value. Not allowed, not allowed because that screws everything up, which we don't want. Um, all right, this would make, if you distributed negative two there, for instance, it make everything negative, that doesn't, that doesn't help you at all. Uh, anywho, that is the whole assignment, and uh, yeah, we know if you have any questions. Take care, bye.